everyone uh, welcome back to cyber secret tv uh, this week we're gonna cover uh, the more advanced version of the file upload vulnerability uh, previous week we talked about the weebly and how we can generate the uh, shell and then how do we execute the shell where the controls are not implemented in the application uh, this week we're gonna uh, look at bit a more secure environment and also uh, at the end we'll also show you the secure implementation and some of the guidelines then how do you implement the secure file upload functionality so uh, the basic checks we want to bypass into uh, this or we want to see in this episode is how like sometimes application performs like extension validation or they perform the content type validation right and so we're going to see how do we bypass this. Of course, we're going to use the similar technique for using the shell, uh, generating the shell, and, and uploading the shell. But we'll use a proxy to bypass uh, some of this validation. And once we do bypass, uh, we'll see like you know how do we get the root access to the remote server so we can execute our commands. So let me switch to my VM, and uh, we'll show you how do we uh, bypass these uh, validations. Now, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, this damn vulnerable application. And uh, as the last time, let's like you know try to upload the shell that we had created, right? So it was shell one dot php. Uh, let's upload. Okay, it says the image was not uploaded because I'm sure there are some validations in the back end. Let's just try to upload a basic image and make sure this functionality is working fine. So this is just a sample image. And it says uploaded. Uh, let's go here, copy this, and check it out if this is really uploaded. Okay, yes. So the file seems to be uploaded, right? Now let's go back and uh, we're going to use the burp so we can see uh, how, what we are doing, right? So, for example, I want to make sure I want to rename this to JPG. Now I can upload certainly upload this uh, file because of course it has got the JPG extension and but uh, the thing we're gonna stuck here is we won't be able to execute this file because it's not a PHP so we have to make it executable. So let me show you how do we do that. Uh, let me open up the Burp Suite. Okay, it's open. Let's make sure our proxy is set. Uh, okay, perfect. Now let me upload, uh, go to desktop, and intercept on. Okay. So here, uh, as you can see, uh, the file is, content type is uh, image JPEG, while the name of the file is JPG. We have to uh, make it PHP so uh, we can easily, like, you know, bypass this, uh, or we can execute our shell. Now, we don't know if the uh, remote server allows uh, us to have the PHP or do they perform extension check. If they don't, our file should be uploaded successfully. Okay, so now, as we see here, this was uploaded. So now let's try, go here, try this. Yes, we got the blank, so that means it is uploaded. Now let's go back to our terminal and uh, thing what we used last time was this Wibbly and then you paste the URL and then you paste the password so I think we use this password to generate the shell we hit enter and looks like we have the root access so let's see ls pwd yes so now uh, as you can see uh, we have like you know we can run any commands that we want into the remote system uh, by using this. So this was uh, like you know uh, one of the uh, way that one can bypass this one. But then the critical question comes: How do we uh, how do we bypass this? Like how do we uh, implement the secure file secure functionality? Right. So that's that's even a uh, better question. So let's see one of like you know uh, good implementation. And this is the latest version of the damn vulnerable application where you have the impossible version where you cannot bypass this one. So let's look at, uh, like, you know, how this implementation. Here, uh, first off, uh, this is the root directory where, uh, like, you know, where the all the images or whatever you upload shell going to be uploaded. Uh, here is the, like, you know, this 
the validation logic which we want to focus on. So one thing you want to see is uh, here they are generating like you know temp file using MD5, which is not so secure, but it's still better than like you know keeping the same name and everything. So how it uh, first off, what they are making sure is that the extension uh, should be either the JPG, JPEG, or PNG, and then they're going to make sure the uploaded size is less than uh, like you know uh, 10,000 or something. Then they are also making sure the upload type, the content type. So earlier we were able to, like you know, submit it with this content type, but the extension was PHP. Now they are making both the extension as well as the content type validation, and then finally get image size. And if the type matches, then yes, it's going to upload and then going to be transferred to the temper file directory. Uh, like you know, if it's in JPEG, they recreate and then do it. And if it's a PNG file, then they just like you know create this and then transfer into this temporary directory. Otherwise, they uh, your image was not uploaded, right? Otherwise, the file is rejected. Now, here uh, as you can see, um, OWASP also has a set of guidelines on how do we upload or what are the things that we need to check while implementing the file upload. So make sure you have the whitelisted allow extension. Only allow safe and critical extension for business functionality. Ensure that in validation is applied. Well, the file type don't trust the content type header as it can be spoofed. Change the file name to something generated by the application because you don't want to keep the file name as is. In this example, we saw where the file was uploaded. We had access to the directory. We also know the name of the file, which is very dangerous. So you always change the file name and also the, uh, the path where it's stored. Set a file name length limit, right? That's obvious. We don't want, uh, like, you know, big shell to be allowed to be uploaded. If the limit is 5 MB, then you make sure you do check that image is not greater than 5 MB. Only allow authorized users to upload files. So this is authorization check. Store the files on a different server. If that's not possible, store them outside of the web root because once someone has an access to the web root, pretty much your entire application is compromised. In the case of public access to the files, use a handler that gets mapped to the file name inside the application. Run the file through an antivirus or sandbox if available. Validate that if it doesn't contain malicious data. Uh, we always recommend that files should be stored somewhere outside of the, uh, like, you know, in a different isolated environment so you can run the antivirus checks and make sure we are not uploading any malware. Ensure that, that any library used for secure configuration are kept up to date and protect against the CSRF attacks. We have talked previously on the CSRF. So this page has a tremendous value and information on how do we, and also helps as a pen testers, what things you should be verify, you should check against, right, when you are uh, doing the pen test for the file upload functionality. And I have kept all the all the descriptions and everything into this, uh, like, you know, down in the comment box or in the description box. And also, I have put the links to the Facebook page where you can follow for the regular updates. Also, I highly advise to, like, you know, um, uh, subscribe to my channel for the weekly episodes. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, let me know if you have any comments. We'll, we'll keep continuing and, and uh, dive into some more advanced techniques next time. All right. Thank you. Bye.